If Benson, if you're out there, uh, please, my name is Nathan. This is called the Nathan Jr. Please make me one more so I can have this and tour with it everywhere I go. Um, so starting off with the guitar, it's a um, ES345, it's a new ES345. Uh, I have a vintage 347 that I have, uh, I have I've retired from the road because I actually lifted it one time and it got nicked by a, um, a ceiling fan. So I, I decided not to take that out anymore. But I love this guitar so much. Um, I've always been a fan of like the ES series of guitars, uh, I want all of them. But I love the neck on this. It's really, it's a really, really thick neck, which I love. Um, it just makes me feel like I'm, like I'm holding on to something substantial. It's not too heavy. Um, I think these are, I'm not sure what type of pickups these are actually. I, I don't, I'm not really a big like pickup changer person. I, if I pick up a guitar and I don't like it, it goes back on the shelf. Um, and then, I also play a soldier strap. Um, made in Chicago. They're made in Chicago. Uh, I don't know when I got this, actually. I just kind of found it and got it. And then I use lava cables, which I love these. I love these lava cables. And then on the pedal board, I've got a Mr. Black Tremolo. Um, I have a Earthquaker Plumes that I use for my, my overdrive sound. and. I've actually kind of been using this DOD compressor as sort of like a boost a little bit. And um, so it's like this pretty much stays on, this is the only pedal that pretty much stays on the whole time, the whole night. And then uh, I also have a cork pitch black tuner. My amp here is oddly enough named a Benson Nathan Jr. Uh, it's, I didn't buy it because of the Nathan thing. Uh, but I really like this one, it's five watts. It's one of the loudest amps I've ever had at 5 watts. Um, it breaks up really nicely. And actually, Cody turned me on to these because I wanted something that was like pretty simple, really clean, and but not just like a Fender Twin. So I was just, he was like, have you ever heard of Benson? And I was like, nope. And he was like, cool, I'm going to take you to check out some Bensons. And I found these. I'm never looking back. I want, if Benson, if you're out there, uh, please... My name is Nathan, this is called the Nathan Jr. Please make me one more so I can have this and tour with it everywhere I go. Starting at the top, um, this is my favorite guitar. Um, this is a 1979 Gibson SG Standard. Um, it has the side mount jack, which is late 79 through early 81, I believe. Um, block inlay. Uh, the neck is tiny. It's like super stupid thin. Like you've tried playing this thing before. It's it's small. So sometimes it takes a little bit of getting used to if you've been playing a lot of big, thick neck guitars. But it's great. Um, and everything else on this guitar has been replaced at some point. It's a Lawler Imperial, I think, in here. And then I just put this. Um, I had a, a newer um, SG Standard. And I really like burst buckers. So I put a burst bucker in the neck. Bigs BB5, and I have it mounted on a Vibramate. So if I want to take it off at some point, it's a no drill type of situation. Uh, soldier guitar strap, that's pretty much all I use anymore. And this one my mom got me. Um, oh, and the most important piece, Grolsch. Um, it's beer. <laughs> uh, it's beer. That's the best strap lock you can buy. And as long as you're not sober, um, it's a good way to go. So, um, or if you're sober, just have a buddy drink a couple. So anyway, um, Gibson, please make me one like this so that I can put this one um, in a safe place. Then, uh, yeah, so down here um, is my beloved Tone King Imperial. I got it from uh, Chicago Music Exchange, which is why it's Tweed. Um, it has an onboard attenuator. Um, they sort of they added that in, I think, with the 20th anniversary version. Um, basically, it's 20 watt amp. Um, it's plenty loud, um, but I usually have the attenuator down two clicks. Pretty much any venue, unless we're playing like a big room like Metro or uh, Thalia Hall or 
someplace like that. As far as my board is concerned, um, seriously, the Deco is like the only pedal I need. Um, and I guess I don't even need it really, but it's my favorite one. Um, the left hand side is basically tape saturation and um, I use it as a boost. And then the right hand side of it, in this band and in my country project, I use it for slapback. Um, and then I recently got this Waylon Jennings uh, phaser pedal, which I haven't quite figured out exactly how a phaser works yet. Um, <laughs> but I like Waylon Jennings a lot, and the fact that he got his own pedal um, is great. It's like it's like if. Um, if like when Miles Davis gets like a, a postage stamp or something, it's like you gotta you gotta get it, you know, you gotta invest. So I bought in. So yeah, that's my uh, my whole deal. Um, There's a 1978 uh, Fender Precision Bass in Olympic white. Um, it's not blonde. It's just faded with time. <laughs> Maybe p potentially faded with nicotine in a past life, but not in my life. Um, I absolutely adore this bass. I would like to be buried with this bass. <laughs> These like mid to late 70s uh, CBS era Fender basses are becoming more valuable over time, but they are still kind of sleepers. Um, I keep the foam uh, here at the bridge uh, pretty much 24-7, uh, unless it's like really necessary um, to take it out, but I just, I love the the Motown thing, uh, the Jamerson thing is uh, that's kind of that's kind of where I live. I keep heavy heavy gauge flat wound strings on here. I don't remember what brand these are. They're not Labellas. I use Labellas on most of my bases these days um, when I try something else. But these are like eight or nine years old at this point. And that's the cool thing about playing a bass with flat wound strings. Never change them, and they only get better. If you don't have a P bass, get yourself a P bass. Sorry to be like a boomer about it, but like, <laughs> you gotta do it. It's the best thing, all right? Everyone has one for a reason. So I keep my uh, effects chain super simple uh, as well here, just tuner. Tiny, tiny little bit of compression just to kind of even things out. Um, but the actual compression, you know, ratio and the settings on there are very, very light. Um, and then just straight into the Noble preamp. Um, the Noble is as magic as everyone thinks it is. Um, it's an incredible piece of gear. Uh, I keep mine on what I call the secret setting, um, which is uh, you turn on the low cut switch and then you use the boost only bass knob, just kind of crank that up to taste. Um, it lets you use the sort of frequency band of the bass knob, which is in a place where I really, really like. I don't know exactly where it's at, like, hertz-wise, but um, it's in a really, really nice spot. It lets you just kind of blend that right up, gives you more presence, gives you more power, and it's just, it's just an amazing machine. These are the things that I hit. <laughs> uh, this is a Gretsch Brooklyn kit, and uh, usually keep them stocked with um, old Zildjian's, I think this is a mid-70s, uh, and those are new beats. Um, and yeah, Snare is a uh, Gretsch Brooklyn as well, and um, I generally go big, so we've got an 18 down there, and this is a 14. Um, and like I said, that's a 24. So it's either this or my really small uh, Questlove Breakbeats kit. And yeah, real, real simple. So I, I generally I like crash on the crash ride here, and sometimes I bring another crash, and other times I just leave it at home. So um, that's me.